dearest Jane, I did it. <laughs> Since you left us, I eat, sleep and breathe my stories. All I think about is writing. <laughs> Mother caught me writing before the dinner with the Lawleys. She had me arrange a walk with their eldest son, Edward, which I hesitantly agreed to for the sake of being able to continue my writings. If father knew, he would never let me look at another piece of paper again. I wrote a book, an actual book with pages that all belong to me. Though this is the happiest time of my life and I feel so much joy, I cannot help but feel the pain of no one ever knowing that it is I, Elizabeth, a woman, and not Ellis, a man, who wrote the book. However, it is the hope that my story of a young woman very much like you, with a strong moral compass and self-respect that you possess, might help change history one day. I dream of a day where women's writing is a genre and not a myth. Dear brother, I am in the midst of battle thinking about the times we had before war was our normality. It is hard to remember a time before the war. It brings so much death and violence. I've forgotten a life without the guns and constant fear of enemy closing in. Moments ago, I shot a soldier. It is not out of the ordinary, that is what we do. But he had the look of a young boy in his eyes when the bullet went through him. For a second he was not the enemy, but a boy I murdered. Even though I told myself that this is what war is like, to kill or be killed, struck a nerve in me. I never thought about the person behind the army clothes. He is someone's son. And for that I'll have a hard time forgiving myself. This evening I was walking back from college and again I was stopped by the police. He had me pushed up against the wall as he patted me down and dropped the contents of my bag and, and thankfully he didn't break my camera. He was calling me a dumb nigger and said I should take my monkey self and all the rest of my rotten kind back to where we came from. But the truth is, I don't even know where I came from. I was adopted because my parents thought they couldn't have children and they never received anything about my birth parents. So after they let me go, I walked into a riot. I saw men, men of all sizes and my skin tone, standing tall against the pigs. I got my camera out and started snapping until, until I realized I, I shouldn't be watching. I, I needed to be in there. I fought with my brothers and stood for something right because the color of my skin shouldn't automatically make me a threat. This needs to stop. <laughs> Being black doesn't make you a criminal. Yes, we are violent, and, and yes, we made a big scene, but, but we had to make ourselves heard because you know, I don't want my children, all my grandchildren, growing up in such a naive and uneducated world. No matter the color of your skin, we all bleed the same. The date is August 11th, 1975. Two weeks ago, I became a dad. To you, Ben. I can tell you, you have been a right nightmare. You cry all day. I never know whether you want to sleep, eat, or just lay around all day. Lazy boy. <laughs> Even with that, you and your brother Calvin are the best things that have happened to me. When you are one day done with chasing girls and start settling down, I hope you'll go through this box and understand why we collect these letters. I have traveled the world and know that it is not always an easy place to be. Every single human being who has ever walked this earth did something with their lives. Though they may not know it, they made a change. The change might not even have happened when they were alive, but it made a difference in another time. It made a difference in our family. It is so important to know about history, other people's struggles and joys. Because if you don't know about the past, then how will you know how to make a better future?